Hello and welcome back, I'm DMAC and today we're going to do a review video of a tool that I've been after for a little while now so let's just have a look at it and it is this one just here. So we'll open it up and you can see there we've got the Leashy Key Cutter. This was sent to me by barhomevip.com and I'm going to leave a link to their website below so you can go and order one of those if you'd like to. So we'll get it out of the, the uh, display case, I said display case, it's a carry case, um, and we'll have a look at the actual tool itself. So first impressions on this was that it is a really made, really well made tool, um, nice kind of tolerances there in the, in the mechanism, and it feels pretty solid. I'm a tradesman, I use tools all day long, and it certainly came across that way to me that it's, it's a good quality tool. And we've got these uh, dipped or coated uh, plastic handles which just make it nice and comfortable. Um, so what is it used for? Obviously it's a key cutter. Um, the way you'd normally cut a key, uh, if you're a locksmith, or the way your keys would be cut would be on a key machine, a key duplicate machine, something like that. Um, and as much as I would like to have one of those, I certainly don't have the space for it, and I certainly um, wouldn't be able to justify the use for it, you know, based on the sort of the cost. So for me, um, having this in the toolbox is... Um, yeah, a really good sort of midway solution. Up until now, I've cut keys uh, using files. The main reason I need to cut keys are for challenge locks, uh, or perhaps I've had a lock that's uh, came to me keyless, and I want to create a key for it, so I tend to use files to do it. And you can kind of get an okay result with that, but this is certainly a step up from the files, but not as good as um, a key cutting machine. Um, Certainly a tool that locksmiths would uh, benefit from having, you know, just knocking about in their van. It certainly would come in useful, I can imagine, for that. But for me, I just wanted something that's going to, you know, cut me some nice keys. So I've got a couple of keys here. So if we look at what we've got there, we've got an American lock AM5 and we've got a Schlage SC1. Although this is the prime version, so it's got the second row bitten down the bottom. This tool isn't going to cut those uh, at all, so it's just going to you know, do these top cuts. Um, and the way it would work um, is we've got this little nipper just at the top which operates on that lower handle and that comes down as we you know pull the two uh, arms together and it takes a little nip out of the key and you can just see that we've got the angle there on the left and right of the cut which should be the lead in and lead out um, giving you those nice key cuts um, and you would probably, you know, to get the best results of this, you'd need space and depth keys uh, as well, which is not something that I have. But what I want to use this for is to sort of duplicate keys. So sometimes a key comes to me, um, and I, I just, I really like the bit in, and perhaps I want to, you know, duplicate that for a challenge lock, um, and that's the the use that I'm going to get out of this. Um, now with keys like these, like the AM5, it's flat on that side, and as you as you rest the key down there. Um, it sits quite nicely on this flat section of the tool and I imagine you can line up your cuts quite easily with that. Um, but I thought we'd use a different uh, key, a more challenging one to demonstrate um, how this tool works. And the key that's most common in England are these uh, Yale keys, the Y1 I believe. Uh, quite challenging uh, to pick because they are paracentric and the warding on them, you know, you, you've got kind of a lot of waves. And like I say, it doesn't have that flat side that the American uh, Keyway has or that the SC1 has. You've got that flat side again there. So using these to cut a Yale key is going to be quite challenging, I think, because the key doesn't have the flat section, so it's going to rock around a little bit, which might make it a bit more of a challenge. Um, but the way we're going to use this one today is I've got a key blank there, so no cuts made on it, and I want to duplicate this key because uh, we've got some quite nice bitting on that, and perhaps I'll use that second key as a challenge lock. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the second key underneath the first one, which is the one we want to copy. Uh, we're going to line up uh, this little bit here, which I don't know the technical name for, uh, but that little nub just um, tells you how far in the keyway uh, the key can go, and then it will stop. Uh, when it gets to that point so if they were misaligned you know something like that then obviously the key cuts aren't going to line up the pins and the key is not going to work and the other important thing is to keep the bottoms of the keys perfectly level again you can imagine if we were sort of slightly off like this exaggerating a bit but if we sort of tried to you know uh, duplicate those cuts there then again it's going to be off so we need to make sure that we keep that flat and keep that aligned so i've got a set of mole grips um, and we're going to use that to try and duplicate that key and see if we can uh, yeah, challenge this key cutter to cut a Yao key. So uh, let me get set up and we'll get into it. 
So I thought it would be a bit easier to go down to the workshop to do this because uh, when we start cutting this key, I'm going to have bits of sharp metal flying around. So we've got our key blank there and we've got our working key. So the first thing is to line these two up perfectly and this should be tricky to do on camera. So I've got a set of mole grips here set up to grab these pretty well. So the first thing is just lining up uh, that little area there. So that looks pretty good. And then to make sure we got the, uh, the keys sitting flat, I'm just going to rest them on this vise. Okay, let's see what we've got. All right, so we're lined up pretty well there. And I think we are sitting pretty flat there, I'd say. It's nice and secure there in the mole grips. So let's give it a go. So what we've got to do, you can see the bit in on the top key there. I've just got to line that up uh, with the key cutters. What I don't want to do, you've got a, a deep cut there on four, is it, I think? What I don't want to do is try and take that all in one one sort of bite. Uh, I'm going to do several uh, several bites to kind of get to those. I've got a deep cut there on two and four, and the others are quite shallow on this key. So we'll try the shallow one first. As I said, the, the Yale key doesn't sit flat, so I've got to kind of uh, give this a little twist as I as I uh, take bites. And you see there it's taking uh, little bites out of the key. We'll go to this next one. It's a very small cut, this one. Very shallow cut, sorry. But it is a cut nonetheless if we don't do it and the key's not going to work. Similarly with, actually I think five is a zero. Um, yeah, there's no cut there. We've got a little one on six. Okay, let's go for these deeper ones. So I'm just going to go for a little cut first of all. I think the other thing is if you go for too deep a cut, number one, you might run the risk of damaging the tool. And number two, you could actually bend the key by putting too much stress on it. We are almost at the depth we need to be. Just check that that bottom, the two bottoms of the keys are still lined up. We'll go for this other deeper cut. Yeah, just little nips at a time, you see. There we go. It definitely is challenging with these Y1 keys. As I've said earlier, they don't sit flat. The key tends to roll around a little bit, but that's why I thought it would be a much more interesting challenge using this key over something easier. We're getting there. there. Uh, you can just see these keys are near misaligned. See that top one has dropped down a little bit. That's better. Back aligned. Hopefully I didn't go too deep.
Well, it doesn't look too bad, but I think what I will do is just switch this around like that, and then we'll cut from the other side just to make sure. So once again, we need to line these up. Up pretty good. The bottoms are seeing flat. So that's the original key there. So I need to do it the other way around now. Difficult to do on camera. Bear with me. there it's just that cut on four Okay, let's call that done and see if we can get this first time. Now, some of these cuts are a little bit rough. So what I am gonna do is I've just got a couple of files there. I've got a round file and a flat file. And just where you've got these rough edges, uh, I'm just gonna give that just a little file. Okay, now for the moment of truth. Let's see if it works in the in the uh, in the lock. And there we go. We got him turning. So that is a little bit stiff. If I just compare that to the original key, the original key is buttery smooth. This one is just a little bit stiff, but he does work. I think I'm going to put that down to um, doing this on camera. <laughs> Um, I don't know if any of you have tried to do a video, do it on camera, but to position the camera is pretty much where my eyes would normally be. Um, so I'm kind of doing this at an awkward angle, but that certainly proves that this um, key cutout works really well. You just see the actuator working now. So I think what I need to do is practice this a little bit more. This is pretty new to me, but luckily I've got a load of blanks thanks to my lock. Um, so I'm going to practice uh, practice with this and see if I can get some um, cleaner results than that. But I think all that's down to is just not looking at it properly as I'm trying to film the video. And perhaps just a little bit of extra filing um, will make it perfect. But either way, it's certainly going to serve a purpose for me. And it's certainly a really great tool to duplicate keys on the fly. All you need is this tool, pair of mole grips, a couple of files. Anyway, thanks for watching today and I'll see you on the next one.